Hello everyone and welcome to the DeerCast. Today um, we're going to be talking you through the Leica Fortis 6 rifle scope. Um, you will have seen we did an earlier video um, when we unboxed uh, and zeroed this in. Um, since then we've had a huge number of questions um, and messages about it so we thought we'd bring you a more, more in-depth video. Um, for the purpose of this video you have to ignore the uh, the mount that it's currently in, that's the quick release mount uh, for my Merkle K3 uh, and then also I put a flip up cap uh, on the end there that is from Leica but doesn't come uh, with the rifle scope when you order it. Um, so if you want one of those you need to go online uh, and order one separately. Um, so when you do order one of these um, it'll come in a very nice uh, box. Uh, in the box you'll get a set of bikini covers, you will get a Leica sticker um, you will get your warranty document uh, and you will also get um, a proof uh, from the factory that it's all been checked and passed various different um, requirements. In terms of the warranty, uh, 10 years on the glass uh, and 2 years on all of the electronic uh, gizmos and bits and pieces uh, inside. Um, the one that we um, have here in terms of 46 is the 1.8-12 by 42i. Um, you can also get it in a 1 to 6 by 24, a 2.5 to 15 by 56, a 2 to 12 by 50, um, and I think that's it. You can also get it in various different configurations, i.e., with a ballistic drop compensator, so a ballistic turret, um, or without. The model we've got has got the ballistic turret, which sits on the top here. Um, and I think Leica have got a really clever um, design for this. It's, it's firstly, it's very low profile, um, but secondly, it's got a locking ring here. So once you've made your adjustment, you can then twizzle this bottom uh, knurled knob here to either lock that adjustment in position or you leave it in a locked position so that, that way it doesn't inadvertently make any adjustments um, uh, when you're out hunting and it's, it's slung over your shoulder. In terms of the pricing of these, um, they range from about one and a half thousand up to about one thousand eight hundred, nine hundred, depending on where you find them um, online. So they are the, a sort of premium optic, um, and the forty-six range does fit in the middle of the Leica range. You've got Amplus at the bottom, Fortis in the middle, and Magnus six um, above. In terms of the features of this scope, um, as it said with um, 42i, the I stands for illumination, so it has got an illuminated reticle. The reticle sits in the second focal plane, so it doesn't get any bigger or smaller as you adjust magnification. It's a very simple duplex reticle with a small dot in the middle that illuminates um, when you turn the dial on the left-hand side um, of the saddle. Um, there are nine different settings for it. Um, and it's a very simple um, to use system. You literally just turn um, this dial here and you can gradually sort of all, uh, increase or decrease the magnification. Uh, on the same left hand side of the saddle um, is also your parallax adjustment, which goes from zero um, out to infinity. And um, it's got marks at 50 and 100 as well, so you can very quickly sort of dial it to those. And I, it's sort of got steps, so when you hit 50 and you hit 100 you sort of feel you have, so you can do it looking through the eyepiece um, without even really noticing. Um, magnification adjusts in the usual way uh, with a knurled ring back here um, and a sort of centre post uh, when you hit the middle of the magnification range. Um, all of the um, adjustments and switches and everything on here are very very simple to use. Um, and they move um, without any glitches at all like you get on some of the cheaper um, optics out there. Um, it's a very impressive sort of small lightweight little um, uh, rifle scape um, perfect for something like a Kiplav rifle. Um, you'll probably notice it's quite a big eye box here um, and that probably one of the biggest questions um, I've had about this rifle scape is people have said well you've gone to a 42 millimeter objective lens, uh, you've probably sacrificed a lot of light gathering um, properties and therefore the sight picture you're going to get at last light is going to be much, much worse. Um, Leica promises has got a 92% light transmission rate um, and I think that uh, the quality of the glass inside and this large eye box um, does mean that actually you get a really, really good picture at last light. So, a few weeks ago, um, I was out with, with someone, um, shot a roebuck at really at last light, um, to the point where when he, he spotted the roebuck first, uh, told me it was, it was, or told me there was a deer there, um, but through the binoculars, he couldn't quite tell whether it was a buck or a doe, couldn't see antlers, um, couldn't see um, any other distinguishing marks, and it was only when um, I got up on the sticks, uh, had a look through this, uh, and right at very last light, I could quite clearly tell it was a buck, I could see the antlers, um, I could see his pizzle, and just the general body shape. So I don't feel like I've sacrificed anything by going down to a 42 
uh, millimeter objective lens uh, on this rifle scope, and I think it just really suits um, rifles like uh, like the K3, for example. So just popping up to the side. Um, in reality, the the Leica 46 has been uh, brought out or not brought out, but it it's there to to rival the Swarovski Z6i. Um, and when I was looking at buying uh, this rifle scope, uh, there was a real dilemma in my mind as to which one to go for. And I sat down and had a look through the the technical specifications for each of them. I mean, the the first thing to comment is about a four hundred pound price difference between the Z6, the equivalent Z6i, uh, and the uh, 46 that um, I ended up going for. So. Re recommended retail prices um, on the 46 was 1,800 and on the Swarovski was 2,200 ish, give or take a little bit on each of them. So 400 quid price difference. The areas where the Swarovski trumps uh, the 46 was on weight uh, and also on length. And you have to forgive me for looking slightly off camera, but I had to write all of these facts and figures down. Um, so the Swarovski is 324 millimeters long, um, whereas the 46 is 335. Weight is probably where there's the biggest difference. So 723 grams for the 46 and 500 for the, the Swarovski. Um, but then as you go through the rest, the, the 46 is sort of a big tick, 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 as it just trumps the, the Swarovski as you go through. So exit pupil uh, on the Leica 46, three and a half to 12.4, whereas on the Swarovski 4.2 to 9.6, uh, mainly to do with the magnification range. Um, Field of view, 3.6 to 20.4 uh, on the Leica. I mean, sorry, the Swarovski does beat it slightly on this one, 4.2 to 25.2. Um, Light transmission, 92%, as I said, on the Fortis, whereas only 90% um, on the Swarovski. Um, Swarovski doesn't, on the model that we're looking at, which is the same magnification, or pretty well the same magnification range, but a four, critically a 42 mil objective lens. Um, we've got 50 out to infinity parallax adjustment on the Leica nothing on the um, Swarovski, so it's fixed at 100 meters. Um, and so the, when I was comparing the two models, what I was looking at was the Leica 46, 1.8 to 12 by 42i, and the Swarovski Z6i, 1.7 to 10. So again, there's a difference in the in the magnification range. So that's what led me to, to settle on the um, on the Leica, was um, I, I thought it would better value for money in terms of it was cheaper and technical specifications wise, I, I thought it was better. And um, the weight is the only thing that I would say is a, is a slight drawback to this scope. It's sort of over 700 grams, it's quite heavy. Um, when I did pick that up with, um, with Leica and said, well, look, it, how is it that Swarovski have produced something 200 grams lighter? Um, Leica obviously didn't comment on, on, um, on why they thought the Swarovski was, was lighter, but they were able to sort of comment on their own scope and said that the reason the, uh, the Leica is, is as heavy as it is, is it's made out of very robust uh, materials and unlike a lot of um, scope manufacturers these days, um, all of the internals are still made out of metal, um, which is something I didn't realise is that a lot of scope manufacturers, both to cut costs um, uh, and then, I mean, coincidentally does then save weight, is it making a lot of the internals out of plastic um, or other different synthetic uh, materials, which is fine, but actually, um, longevity wise they're probably not going to stand up to the same level as pun of punishment as something like this Fortis um, Fortis 6 hopefully will and that's probably the reason it's it's got such a good warranty on it. Um, otherwise I would just say that generally very very happy with um, with this with this scope seems to track perfectly uh, magnification is brilliant the colors absolutely fantastic light transmission is great um, so if you are in the market for a small um, scope, uh, sort of right at the top end of the market to, to fit on um, something like a Merkel K3 or a K95, um, then this is well, well, well worth a look. Um, we'll keep you uh, updated with progress of this rifle scope. We haven't had it sort of six months yet, so I'm sure you'll see much more of it to come. Um, but thank you very much for watching. Um, as per usual, please remember to comment, like and subscribe. And we look forward to seeing you on the next one.